Now, in the movie industry, the word remake is often met with groans and eye rolls. After all, why retell the same stories over and over when you could create something completely new? But when it comes to video games, remakes don't exactly carry the same stigma. In fact, this practice is encouraged in the gaming industry since games tend to show their age very quickly. For example, although Pong, Space Invaders and the original Super Mario Bros were a marvel to play back in the day, you can't deny that they look like total crap nowadays. But because the nostalgia for titles such as these is still strong, developers are eager to overhaul classic games for a modern audience. So it begs the question, why haven't these 10 games gotten their remake already? Because bloody hell, they were brilliant. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 obvious video game remakes the industry is ignoring. Number 10. Chrono Trigger By today's standards, Square's beloved RPG is still pretty much perfect. After experiencing the game's creative combat, well-written characters, the flawless world-building, and the gorgeous score, it's impossible not to fall in love with it. So it brings me back to the original question, where is the Chrono Trigger remake? After its sequel Chrono Cross was re-released in 2022, you'd think that it would have generated some buzz about redoing its predecessor. Instead, Square Enix put all of their chips in and bet on bloody Marvel's Avengers. I mean, look how that's turned out for you. And the fact that the developers have never tried to breathe life back into Chrono Trigger isn't just upsetting, it's actually a bit of an insult. Number 9. Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem Now, nobody knew what to expect from Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, since it was the first mature-rated game published by Nintendo and the first title released under the company's new president, Satoru Iwata. But anyone who's had the fortune to experience this GameCube exclusive will tell you that it's one of the most creative horror titles ever. In Eternal Darkness, you play as 12 different characters throughout various time periods spanning almost two millennium, each armed with a diverse range of mystical enchantments and weapons. And because of the game's evolving story and magnificent world-building, it's impossible not to become enraptured. And that's not even mentioning the sanity effects. Every time you're exposed to something supernatural, your mental state gradually deteriorates, causing you to hallucinate. Not only is this a great idea, it gets really, really meta. When the game pretends to restart or wipe your memory card, you start to question your own bloody sanity. Even though sanity effects have been implemented in other properties, none have done it better than here in Eternal Darkness. If you were scared out of your wits while playing this masterpiece on a 20-year-old system, could you imagine how petrifying it would be with some modern graphics and a plethora of new sanity effects? How brilliant would that be? Number 8. Beautiful Joe it's ironic how cel-shaded video games were met with such disdain at first, considering that they've aged so utterly beautifully. So with this in mind, Capcom should definitely give Beautiful Joe another look. Released way back when in 2003, this wacky beat-em-up was recognized for its luscious aesthetic, cheeky humor, and brutal boss fights. But Joe's biggest selling point was how the gameplay incorporates film themes in rather inventive ways. You can zoom in to make your punches and kicks bigger, fast forward to smash your enemies to dust, and dodge attacks by activating slow motion. These mechanics were also implemented into the puzzles, forcing you to put your thinking cap on if you hope to unlock doors and obtain artifacts. Now, Beautiful Joe didn't sell well, but it did make enough to generate a sequel. Although Beautiful Joe 2 definitely ended on a cliffhanger, its sales were lower than Capcom expected, forcing the company to cancel the proposed threequel. Even though fans are still pushing for Beautiful Joe 3, it might be more sensible to overhaul the original game, rather than continuing the plot on from an 18-year-old game. I mean, just look how that worked out for Shenmue 3. I mean, come on Capcom, you have made a bajillion dollars on the Resident Evil and Monster Hunter franchises. Could you not take a chance by redoing one of your most underrated titles, please? And speaking of, number 7, Resident Evil 1, again. Okay, so let's face facts here. Resident Evil 6 wasn't just bad, it was so abominable it really hurt the branding. And for a time, fans were genuinely uncertain whether Capcom's most recognized property would actually recover. But not only did the survival horror series make a comeback, we've been experiencing something of a Resident Evil renaissance recently. In the past few years, we've had Resident Evil 7, RE8, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and the Resident Evil 3 Remake, all of which were met pretty positively. And although we all know that Resident Evil 9 is inevitable, Capcom should definitely think about remaking making the one that started it all again. Because yes, most gamers are well aware that Resident Evil was already remade in 2002. Not only did this version have vastly superior graphics, it had additional gameplay mechanics, puzzles, areas, enemies, and a heavily updated script. But even though the Resident Evil remake had top-tier graphics in its day, it can't avoid looking a little rough around the edges nowadays. With Resident Evil going through a resurgence in recent years, now is the perfect time to give the original a do-over once again. Number 6. Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door Every 
Every time a new Nintendo system is released, fans are eager to get their hands on the latest Super Mario game. So when Super Mario Sunshine was announced for GameCube, we definitely got hyped. But to everyone's surprise, Sunshine's Thunder was actually stolen by a spin-off, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. This role-playing game was heavily praised for its innovative combat mechanics, detailed environments, and beautiful visuals. However, the main reason this sequel stands out is because it is really, really funny. Although Super Mario has always had a pleasant sense of humor, the Thousand Year Door is crammed with comedy gold. And because of how well this title turned out, gamers hoped that Paper Mario would be the next Nintendo spin-off to take off, much like Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros. Sadly, every follow-up since failed to measure up. Because the RPG series hasn't churned out anything decent since, well, the Thousand Year Door, now would be an ideal time to remake it, or at the very least, give it a remaster. Not only would a remake be a perfect way to revisit this classic, it would give the Paper Mario name the boost that it so desperately needs. Number 5. Dino Crisis 1 and 2 because Dino Crisis could have easily been a bare-bones copy of Resident Evil, it's impressive just how well the first two installments turned out. Not only was the original a lot of fun, but it was way more clever than you'd think, focusing more on puzzles than just blasting reptiles' heads off. The player was given limited weapons and ammo, compelling them to be more tactical to avoid ending up in the stomach of a T-Rex. Instead of Dino Crisis 2 giving us more of the same, the action-oriented sequel had the player blasting every prehistoric beast imaginable, including Tyrannosauruses, Velociraptors, and Pterodons. Now, I know that pterodons aren't technically dinosaurs, but they are still very, very cool. Things were going so well, it looked like Dino Crisis would become a staple in the survival horror genre. But after Dino Crisis 3 took things to space and tanked entirely, the franchise was rendered extinct. But after the Jurassic World films were released, everyone went a bit Dino crazy again. And since the Jurassic tie-in titles made a truckload of money, who wouldn't want to see Dino Crisis be brought back to life? Number 4. Gunstar Heroes now, Contra may have popularized the run-and-gun shooter, but Gunstar Heroes took things to a whole new level. With its frantic action, relentless enemies, and screen-filling bosses, this Genesis title was light years ahead of other 2D platformers. Because it sold well, received universal acclaim, and kicked off Treasure's career as a gaming developer, it looked like Gunstar Heroes was destined for success. Bizarrely though, Treasure never really revisited the game, which is ironic because it's still regarded as the company's best work. Apart from a forgotten sequel on the Game Boy Advance and a straight 3DS port, nothing else has been done with this IP. Even though some great games haven't aged well and should be left in the past, Gunstar Heroes is not one of them. Not only should Gunstar Heroes make a comeback, but it deserves a thorough remake. Although the core mechanics should definitely remain, it would be awesome to replay this old game with modern graphics, new bosses, and even more weapons. Number 3. The Simpsons Hit and Run the Simpsons' best days are definitely long behind it, but it hasn't stopped its overall popularity. As hard as it is to believe, Matt Groening's creation is currently the most popular TV series on Disney+, and the quality may have suffered a massive dip over the years, but there's no question the iconic family from 742 Evergreen Terrace has a loyal, loyal fanbase. So it's a mystery why Simpsons' hit and run has remained untouched. There wasn't much hype when this driving title was released back in 2003, since it was regarded as a GTA clone and another needless Simpsons tie-in, but amazingly, it turned out to be a fun and hilarious racer as well as one of the best Simpsons games to date. Die Hard fans hugely appreciated Hit and Run, since it was littered with easter eggs, self-referential jokes, and an astonishingly accurate representation of Springfield. Despite its popularity though, Hit and Run never had a remaster or a reboot. Worse still, it's never been re-released. Apart from a proposed sequel in 2007, nothing else has been done with his property. And because every Simpsons tie-in game since has failed to deliver, this is all the more reason why Hit and Run should be taken for another spin. Number 2. Final Fantasy VI before Final Fantasy VI, we've rarely, if ever, seen a game on this scale. The sequel had an enchanting soundtrack, a hugely diverse combat system, and a wonderful world to delve into. Not only does this saga have a complex narrative, every aspect is explored through the eyes of 14 playable characters. Before Final Fantasy VII took the crown, this installment was regarded as the GOAT of the series. Even though the first six Final Fantasy installments are getting a pixel remaster, we deserve more than just a touch-up. I mean, imagine flying across the globe in sets as blimp in HD. Think how cool it would be to battle Kefka or watch Saban suplex the ghost train with 3D graphics. Picture how beautiful the opera sequence would be if it was given a modern touch. If the developers gave Final Fantasy VI a complete graphic upgrade and nothing else, fans of course would be satisfied, but why not go that extra mile? 
By reworking Final Fantasy VI from scratch, we could have a title on par with the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and since many modern gamers aren't acquainted with Final Fantasy VI, it would be a perfect way to introduce this marvel to a whole new fanbase. And number one, Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. Now let's face it, we put this one here at number one because of Scott Tailford, because this guy absolutely loves Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. Every single week on our podcast, the UBP or Untitled Banter Podcast, he will tell me, hey Jules, where's that Soul Reaver remake coming out? I don't know, Scott, but, but here, I'll put it at the top of this list for you. Now, if ever there was a formula to deduce which game deserved a reboot, Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver would come out on top. Even though the first installment, Blood Omen, was solid, this sequel improves in every department. Soul Reaver has been commended for its minimal loading times, magnificent soundtrack, focus on atmosphere, and elevated standard in voice acting. But despite the universal love that Soul Reaver received, there hasn't been a whisper of the franchise for two decades. And annoyingly, you can't even blame the creators, as director Amy Hennig has been so busy with the Uncharted and Jack series that she hasn't had time to revisit this. And Crystal Dynamics have focused so much on Tomb Raider, it's hard for them to squeeze in time to work on anything else. Nevertheless, you know a modern remake of Soul Reaver would sell like crazy, but it wouldn't just whet the appetite of die-hard fans, but it would also be for brand new ones as well because Soul Reaver was only available on the PlayStation and Dreamcast and there are millions of gamers who were aware of its legacy but never had the chance to experience it. And rebooting this Legacy of Kane sequel wouldn't just scratch the nostalgic itch, if done right, it would reinvigorate the series for years to come. And there we go my friends, those were 10 obvious video game remakes the industry is ignoring. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Instagram where it's at RetroJ but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there my friends and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.